Hi everyone, this is Vanessa with the latest update of Azen News and here they are. Capital Jakarta of Indonesia tops the list of the most polluted city in the world. According to data by Swiss Air Quality Technology Company, IQ Air, Indonesia's capital Jakarta topped the list as the world's most polluted city, having consistently ranked among the 10 most polluted cities globally since May. According to IQ Air, Jakarta, which has a population of over 10 million, registers unhealthy air pollution levels nearly every day. Although it is not number one every day, on IQ Air's list of most polluted city, its historic air quality graph shows it is consistently in the top 10. I think the current situation is very worrying. When I see my friends at the office, there are many who are sick with flu and cough. I still use a mask. My family and I, my wife and children definitely use masks. Then secondly, we reduce the use of private vehicles. For example, I go to the office using the commuter's train and thirdly at home use an air purifier. Dan ya, ketiga, untuk di rumah sih kita pakai air purifier gitu ya. The court at the time ruled President Joko Widodo must establish national air quality standards to protect human health and the health minister and Jakarta governor must devise strategies to control air pollution. Crippling drought forces Indonesia farming community to dig for water. For months, a large chunk of tobacco farmers' Sunardi's typical day has consisted of plowing through mud and pebbles of a once thriving river just to find a few liters of murky water. The dark shallow dredges have been his only source of water for the past two months in drought-stricken Karanganyar village of Indonesia's central Java province. For the village of just over 5,000 people, rain has been extremely scarce over the past four months, rendering some of their precious crop, such as corn, unharvestable. The drought in this village has been felt since April and there has been no rain till now. The wells in the area have dried out, so residents can only get water from this riverbed. If the water in the river is totally gone, we have to queue up to collect it, sometimes for washing, cooking, and even for drinking. Now they have no choice but to track as much as 8 kilometers or 4.97 miles to dig into the river beds of murky, often salty water to fulfill their daily needs. According to Indonesia's weather agency, around 22 villages of Grobogan Regency, including Karanganyar, have been suffering a serious drought even before the dry season in the archipelago arrived, which typically lasts from May to September every year. This year's drought has left villagers unable to access their traditional source of irrigation, which are the existing wells around their houses or in their villages. According to local officials, several reservoirs around the Grobogan area have also experienced a decrease in water levels, leaving irrigation canals dry and crops withering in the heat. Indonesia's weather agency warned last month of a severe dry season from its impact this year, threatening harvest and heightening the risk of forest fires. It is expected to peak between August to early September this year. Philippines president says will continue to assert sovereign rights in South China Sea. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said the country continues to assert its sovereignty and territorial rights despite challenges in the South China Sea. We continue to, to, to assert our sovereignty. We continue to... Um, to assert our territorial rights in the face of all of these challenges and um, consistent with uh, the international law and UNCLOS especially. Uh, so that, is, uh, that has al always been our stand and that will. But we still have to keep 
Uh, we still have to keep communicating with the Chinese government, with President Xi, with Beijing. We still have to keep communicating with them because we need to really come to a conclusion. The Philippines last week accused a Chinese coast guard of blocking and water cannoning a Philippine military supply boat in the South China Sea. China claims sovereignty over almost the entire South China Sea, an assertion rejected internationally, while Malaysia, Vietnam, Brunei, Taiwan and the Philippines have various claims to certain areas. The Chinese Coast Guard use of water cannons was not the first, as it also sprayed water at Manila's boats on a mission to supply food and water to a handful of troops living aboard of a rusty warship on November 2021. Nine people died as a result of flash floats and landslide in Vietnam. State media VTV reported that at least nine were killed across Vietnam after landslides and floods were triggered in the Southeast Asian country. Footage recorded showed various provinces in both the north and the south of the country inundated by flood water, which left several roads damaged and motorists stranded. According to local media, heavy downpours with precipitation readings of 100 to 200 mm have been recorded in Vietnam's northern region since August 4. Local media reported Vietnamese Prime Minister Pam Minh Chin also issued a notice requesting local authorities to increase their response and provide aid to affected areas. Philippines says China blocked a water cannon boat in South China Sea. The Philippines accused China's Coast Guard of blocking and water cannoning a Philippine military supply boat in the South China Sea, condemning the excessive and offensive actions against its vessels. The armed forces of the Philippines said a Chinese Coast Guard vessel blocked and water cannoned the chartered Philippine boat on a routine troop rotation and resupply mission. It said in a statement the incident occurred near the Second Thomas Shoal, with Manila calls Ayungi Shoal a submerged reef where a handful of its troops lives on a rusty World War II era US ship that was intentionally grounded in 1999. China claims sovereignty over almost the entire South China Sea, an assertion rejected internationally. Beijing often risks its neighbors with maritime actions they call aggressive, with no longer term activities like building islands on reefs, with equipping them with missiles and runways. Chinese Ambassador to Philippines clarifies China's standby on Ren Aijiao. Chinese ambassador to the Philippines said China hopes to work together with the Philippines to implement the consensus reached by the two heads of state and uphold peace and tranquility in the waters of Ren Ai Jiao. Ren Ai Jiao is part of China's Nansha Islands in the South China Sea. The Philippines sent four ships, two supply ships and two coast guard ships into the waters of Ren Ai Jiao without authorization despite China's repeated dissuasion and warnings. In accordance with the law, the China Coast Guard took corresponding measures and expelled the Filipino ships carrying illegal building materials from the waters. Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, Juan Xilian, met with Under Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines, Teresa P. Lazaro. Huang stressed that for some time the Philippines has repeatedly taken unilateral actions that undermine the existing consensus and challenge the status quo of management and control of Ren Aijiao waters. China has repeatedly expressed its serious concerns to the Philippines through multiple channels. Second son of Thailand's king makes surprise return after 27 years. The second eldest son of Thailand's king, Mahavajira Longkorn, visited a child care center for underprivileged families during a surprise visit to the kingdom, the first time he has been back in his homeland in 27 years. The trip by Vacharaya Sorong, Viva Charawongse 42, comes at a fourth time for the Thai royal family with the monarch's eldest daughter in a coma since December. Vacharai Sorn, who works at a law firm in New York, visited the Foundation for Slum Child Care, which is supported by the royal family, and greeted well-wishers. The palace household bureau does not respond to requests for comment. Vacharai Sorn is the second of four sons of King Vajira Longkorn's second wife, Sujarine Vivachar Wongse, a former actress whom then the Crown Prince divorced in 1996. The thrice-divorced King Vajira Longkorn has seven children. He is married to Queen Sutida, his former chief bodyguard whom he wed days before his coronation in 2019. The 71-year-old monarch has not named an official heir. 
Sister of Slain Colombian in Thailand Fierce Suspects Extradition. The sister of Colombian surgeon allegedly killed in Thailand by the son of a Spanish actor said she fears the suspect will be extradited to his father's fame. He's not only dismembered my brother, but my family. We want that justice to make justice. That my brother's death is not left unpunished. Darling Arieta Arteaga said she wanted justice for her brother, Edwin Arieta Arteaga, 44, whose body parts were found at landfill on Copangang. Daniel Sancho Broncal, the son of a Spanish language star, Rolfo Sancho, was detained in a connection to the murder. Thai police reported the suspect confessed to the crime. The police informed Sancho, 29, is charged with premeditated murder and concealing and removing body parts to cover up the death or the cause of death of the victim. We have concluded today's episode, everyone. Have a lovely and nice week this ahead. See you soon.